but that was the biggest mistake that I made early on. Hello and welcome. My name is Gino Barber. I'm one of the co-founders of Jake and Gino. And in this how-to video, we're going to be talking about GRM. What is GRM? We're going to be talking a little about price per unit, the 1% rule. We may throw a little bit of cap rates in there. But to start out with, GRM stands for Gross Rent Multiplier. The formula is your property's purchase price or the market value divided by the gross rental income. I know when I first started out in investing in real estate, this is a quick way for me to understand the purchase price of a property in relation to how much income you were getting from that property. Now, when I started out back in 2011 with Jake, the GRM, the gross rental multiplier, was really low because property prices were low and the incomes were, you know, a little bit higher at the, at the point. Our very first deal, I'll never forget in 2013, the gross rental multiplier was a four. It means the price was really low and the rents were, were pretty high at the time. But that's what happens when you're in a recession, you're in a buyer's market. People are, are they're afraid, prices are depressed. And, and why do you use this metric? That's the most more important part that I wanna talk about in this week's call. When we look at it, it's one metric that we like to look at. Not the only metric, it's used as a rule of thumb. And unfortunately, I can't say an eight gross rental multiplier is great because every market is different. What I would do is I would go into the market that you're in and look at it historically. And you'll see it was really low back in 2013, 14. As we go into the cycle, it starts getting higher, higher, higher. And then all of a sudden you you're, you got deals now that are trading at 15, 20, 25, 30 times their gross rents. Like I said, our very first deal was a four. Our second deal that we did in 2013 was a seven gross rental multiplier. So when you're looking at it, let's say you're buying a property for a million dollars. That's the purchase price. You have $100,000 in gross rents. That would make it a 10 GRM, 10 times the gross rents. That same property at a million dollars, and it's only getting 50,000 in rents. That means the gross rents are 20. Now, does that mean the property is overpriced? Once again, I'm going to sound like an attorney. It depends. You may be in a market that has high cap rates, low prices. Some markets that are more challenging, more difficult, they're going to have higher cap rates because those prices are depressed. There's more risk. Their gross rent multipliers are going to be a lot lower. They're going to be a lot more attractive, which means that those properties are going to cash flow. At a certain number, at a gross rental multiplier, your, your property's not going to cash flow if it's so high. So when we're looking at it, that's one number that you can, you can look at. The other one that we like to look at is price per door, price per unit. In the last couple of years, people have been poo-pooing this. Oh, price per door doesn't make, doesn't make a difference. It doesn't really matter. Well, to us, it matters. We, we like to use what everyone considers the 1% rule is, is another rule of thumb that people out there utilize. The 1% rule basically says you take your price per unit. You have $100,000 price per door, right? If you're collecting $1,000 per month in rents, you divide the $1,000 divided by the $100,000, you're going to get 1%. 1% of the rents is what in relation to that price per door. Now, if you're buying a property at $100,000 per unit and the rents are only $800, that's only 0.08. Now, I'm not here to tell you to buy it or not to buy it. What I'm here to say is how we use it is if we can buy that property for $100,000 a unit and rents are only $700, but we know the after repair, once we've done the repositioning, we can get them to 1100, that deal probably works. Remember, these are all indicators. These are all metrics that we're trying to use to get quick back of the napkin before you go into this deep underwriting, understanding it. So if people have been buying deals at you know 150,000 a unit, 180,000 a unit, and rents are like $1,100, that deal is gonna be very difficult to reposition. Now, people have gotten away with it. it that, that, um, I should say that deal is going to be very difficult to cash flow. People have gotten away with it over the last couple of years because they've been playing this hot potato. They've been buying the deal, fixing it up, putting a little you know lipstick on the pig, flipping it to the next person. Well, now the rubber, as they say, is hitting the road right now. That's stopped. That is stopping right now. So we have to get back into basic metrics, basic fundamentals. The 1% rule, I think, is going to come back and people are going to be talking about it. It's been challenging over the last couple of years to use that 1% rule. We've utilized it in deals that we've bought. We've exceeded the 1% rule. 
on an after repair, right? Very important. The gross rents, looking at it, it's been challenging. I think our last deal we've done in 2023, the gross rents were 10. I mean, think about it. That's basically double what we were buying back in 2013 prices are coming down. That's why the gross rents was only a 10 on the last deal we've done. If we bought it last year, that same deal probably would have been a 15 or 20 would have been a lot higher. And the last metric that we like to talk about, which Jake and I like to kid about it is the cap rate. The cap rate is the holy grail of investing in real estate. Cap rate, I'm going to give you a simple formula. It's the NOI divided the purchase price or the market value right? Very simple. $100,000 net operating income. The purchase price is a million dollars. You take 100,000, you divide it by a million, you have 0.1 or a 10 cap. I'm not going to tell you what the definition is because everyone has their own definition. The way you use a cap rate is you're trying to understand what the cap rate is in the market. So if you're buying a, a properties in a market that are 10 caps, and all of a sudden you find one that's priced at a 12 cap, well, you may be finding value there. You, you may be buying it above what the cap rate is in the market. So understand it. The more important thing is where are you buying and what the cap rates are in your market? Because if you're looking at a, in a market, let's say you're in Detroit and cap rates are typically eight or nine caps in Detroit and you go in and you tell a broker, I'm looking for 13 or 15 caps, the broker is going to laugh at you and say, we don't have that here. So understand what cap rates are in your market understand with the 1% rule how it works in your market and understand the gross rental multiplier in your market. What happens in those three markets? These are three metrics that you can use as you're underwriting deals to give you a quick, dirty back of the napkin. Now, if you want more information, just go to jakeandgino.com forward slash apply. Apply to work with our team. If you're looking for more information on how to get into multifamily, because I know a lot of students out there that we've had, and a lot of members, when they started out, they were in the single family space. They didn't know how to really underwrite a multifamily deal. There is There are differences. There are very, a lot of similarities in real estate, but there are a lot of differences. And one of the differences is understanding these metrics, understanding cap rates, understanding the 1% rule in multifamily, see how it fits into, into your buy right criteria. And ultimately, as you're creating these, you can create your own, what we call the buy right criteria. What does your 1% rule look like for your criteria? What does the cap rate look like for deals that you're targeting for your criteria? What is the gross rental multiplier look like in your market? So when you have these numbers, all of a sudden a broker brings over a deal, it's got a 10 gross rental multiplier, it's got a six cap, and it's got the 1% rule. Well, then all of a sudden you say to yourself, that's a deal. I know it right now. Let me dive into it a little bit more, but you get excited. And that's what all these metrics, setting these metrics are on the front end are. It's all about creating the buy right criteria. It's buy right, manage right, and finance right. But if you don't know your criteria and what to buy, you're going to make a mistake. And you know, I'd share this story at our live event, Multifamily Mastery 6, but that was the biggest mistake that I made early on. I had beginner's luck. My very first deal was a four unit. And it was actually a three unit converted to a four unit, but I held that property for 20 years and I ended up selling it because we left New York and I did really well over the years with that property. But after that, I had no criteria. I got into a mobile home park. I got into a strip center. I got into a couple of duplexes up in Rochester and those investments weren't bad. The thing that was really bad in my instance was I didn't have the map. I didn't have a process or a framework. I didn't have these metrics. I didn't have an understanding of the asset that I was investing in. And that's what we do at Jake and Gina. We teach our members how to actually create these criteria and look at it from the lens of buy right, manage right, finance right. Now, what I want you to do, go to jakeandgino.com, check out the information that we have in there, subscribe to our podcast. We have the Jake and Gino show, we have the Movers and Shakers show, and obviously this how-to channel on how to continue to build your business. Once again, I just want to thank you for listening to Jake and Gino, for being part of the community, and I will see you on next week's How To. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll never miss another episode.